apathy, greed, corruption, power, hope. When you first hear the Batman Beyond theme song, these are just some of the words that are core to the Batman Beyond narrative. Batman Beyond is one of the greatest animated Batman series ever, and it's kind of crazy going back and watching it today. I got a lot of nostalgia, because with the death of the confident male archetype in shows nowadays, it's become increasingly more rare to see a confident male lead. As far as Batman Beyond goes, they honestly don't make him like this anymore. Batman Beyond was so far ahead of its time, it was almost like a mix of Cyberpunk 2077 and Batman before Cyberpunk 2077 was even a thing. And ironically, the best animated Batman series ever has very little to do with Bruce Wayne. Rebirth, part one out of two. So the show starts off with Batman combing a warehouse for this debutante that has been kidnapped. As the female is lying there tied up, the news is playing about how Bruce Wayne just thwarted another attempt from Powers to take over Wayne Industries. Powers is Bruce Wayne's main opposition, but he becomes a lot more than that. As Bruce Wayne locates the debutante, right before she's about to be executed, he swoops in and he makes quick work of most of the criminals involved. Unfortunately, during the process, Batman starts having chest pains as Bruce Wayne is extremely old at this point. As he's untying the debutante, one of the criminals gets the drop on him and he starts beating the crap out of Batman. So Batman is lying there on the floor about to be done in by this guy on the spot when he spots a pistol and he grabs it and he points it at the guy. The guy runs away but he is later apprehended by the Gotham City Police Department. Batman is wallowing in his own despair having to actually have used a criminal's own weapon against him. Coming to the realization that he's hella old, Batman decides to hang up the cape and you get a shot of all the generations of bat suits on display. In the next scene, you briefly get a shot of Terry's dad. Terry's dad, Warren McGinnis, is receiving a file from his friend who is suffering from some kind of disease ailment. As Warren McGinnis is handed the file, some men show up and apprehend his friend. And this is the last time he'll see his buddy. Next, you see the guy who will become our future protagonist. This troubled teen is Terry McGinnis. Terry is on the train when he witnesses some lady being harassed by one of the members of the Jokers. Terry proceeds to promptly dispatch the guy and make quick work of him and proceed on his merry way. The next shot you get is at Terry's school and Terry's wrestling the neighborhood jock Nelson. Terry proceeds to get disqualified for hitting Nelson in the face after Nelson spits on him. The girl watching them wrestle is Dana, who's Terry's main love interest in. After getting into an argument with his father over the altercation that occurred earlier, Terry goes out and meets up with Dana to have a good time, but unfortunately a group of Jokers shows up and proceeds to attack the group. The Jokers are very reminiscent of the Tiger Claws from Cyberpunk 2077, and considering the fact that Batman Beyond came out first, I would have to say the Tiger Claws are very reminiscent of the Jokers. Terry ends up taking out some of the Jokers and jacking one of the Jokers for his motorcycle and trying to get away from the whole situation. But all the Jokers descend upon Terry as Terry flees into the mountains and he almost runs into Bruce Wayne, but unfortunately he swerves and he ends up falling off of his bike. All of the Jokers show up, and one of the Jokers pulls out a knife and he's about to kill Terry, but Terry and Bruce Wayne join forces and promptly dispatch the Jokers. I guess the old man still got it, huh? Unfortunately, Bruce Wayne is having one of his chest pains and one of his attacks, so he needs his medicine. Terry helps Bruce to his mansion, and he gets Bruce his medicine, and Bruce passes out. Terry snoops around the mansion just a little bit, and I mean just a little bit, and Terry discovers the Batcave. As Terry is observing all the Batsuits on display, 
He's astonished by what he's seeing, having come to the realization that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Bruce Wayne shows up and beats the hell out of Terry and throws him out of his mansion. Terry returns home to the grisly scene of his father having apparently been murdered by the Jokers. Powers says he'll use whatever influence he has to help Terry find his father's murderers. As Terry is moving out and he's moving into the home of his mother, he discovers the file that his dad received earlier. Apparently, this file contained something so incriminating, it gave Terry enough concern to go back to Bruce Wayne and let him know about this data disk that he just acquired. After banging on Bruce Wayne's door for a while, Bruce Wayne finally lets Terry in, and this is the start of the next generation of Batman. And then we're treated to this badass outro. Go ahead, give it a listen. Next episode, we see Bruce Wayne analyzing the data disk Terry gave him. Bruce Wayne discovers that Powers is manufacturing a mutagen through his company. Bruce Wayne tells Terry to take the data disk to Barbara at the GPD, but Terry is bummed about this thinking that the cops are useless, but Batman insists he give the data disk to Barbara. On Terry's way to the GPD, Terry is apprehended by Mr. Powers and his goon who proceed to strip Terry of the data disk. After losing the data, Terry somehow manages to sneak back into Bruce Wayne's mansion, infiltrate the Batcave, steal the Batsuit, and he goes after Mr. Powers himself as the new Batman. After Terry locates Mr. Powers, you once again get a showcase of how sick the Batsuit is, as simply by pressing his fingers on the glass, he can listen in on these guys' conversation from like 50 feet away. Terry comes to the realization that the big dude is the one that killed his father, and Terry proceeds to leave the scene. Before Terry can get out though, Terry is unfortunately spotted by some goons and he's forced to dispatch them. As more goons show up, Bruce proceeds to get on the two-way radio of the bat suit, and he tells Terry to bring the suit back as the suit doesn't belong to him, but Terry tells Bruce he's having way too much fun to do that. So while Bru Terry is in combat, Bruce Wayne disables the suit as the suit has a fail-safe locking mechanism and Terry starts getting his ass whooped by four goons, so much so to the point where Terry's on the ground, literally about to be executed and he's pleading with Bruce to cut the bat suit back on. So while Terry's on the ground about to get shot in the face, Bruce Wayne finally cuts the suit back on and Terry proceeds to deal with the last of these goons. As Terry is heading back to Bruce Wayne, he lets Bruce Wayne know he has the location of where Powers is manufacturing the mutagen, and he lets Bruce Wayne know that Powers is shipping out the mutagen tonight, and he gets the go ahead from Bruce Wayne to take down Powers. Terry proceeds to make his way to where Powers is shipping out the mutagen, and once again you get a showcase of how cool the surveillance tech is on the Batsuit as simply by pointing his fingers in the direction of where all the goons are, Batman is able to listen in on the conversation from a significant distance away. As Batman is spotted, he's forced to take out all of Power's goons, and the guy that killed Terry's dad gets on a transport and starts transporting the mutagen. Powers is having a shootout with Batman, but unfortunately this results in Batman throwing a container of the mutagen at Powers and infecting Powers. As Batman is going after the goon that killed his dad, he finally makes it to the transport and he starts fighting with the guy. Unfortunately, the dude is wearing some electric brass knuckles and Batman knocks him into the control panel for the ship and all of the mutagen falls loose in the transport and the transport crashes into the sea. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that guy's dead and I think there's a major biohazard in the ocean that they're gonna have to deal with. But as Terry wakes up the next day, he's greeted by Mr. Wayne offering him a job. 
So Terry's mom is ecstatic and she tells Mr. Wayne, of course, Terry will accept the job. But in the last scene, you get a shot of Mr. Powers being cured of the mutagen using extreme radiation. And they inform Mr. Powers it has some unfortunate side effects and they turn off the light. And as you can see, this dude is basically Skeletor now. He's now your first major antagonist, Blight. Episode three, Blackout. In the next episode, we're introduced to our next major antagonist in Batman Beyond, Ink. Ink is a polymorph in one of Batman's deadliest foes. Ink's origins remain largely undisclosed, but it is known that she is born into extreme poverty and she eventually decided to take the easy way out and she turned to a life of crime. Ink hijacks some kind of oil tanker from Fox Tech and it would appear she is working for Mr. Powers. Bruce Wayne goes and confronts Mr. Powers just to let him know who's in charge of Wayne Industries and sneaky old Bruce manages to get some of Ink's genetic makeup while he's there. In the next shot, we get Terry. He is at a literal air hockey game with Dana. Unfortunately, Terry gets a call from Mr. Wayne. And what Terry is starting to figure out is with great power comes great responsibility. And Terry is already having to sacrifice aspects of his social life in order to be Batman. As we pan back to Ink, Ink is hitting another warehouse until she is confronted by Batman. This results in a physical altercation between the two of them. Unfortunately for Batman, Ink absolutely wipes the floor with Batman as Ink is a badass and Ink escapes at her own leisure. Unfortunately, this won't be the first time either. Terry returns to Mr. Wayne having just got his ass whooped and they come to the realization that they need to figure out a weakness for Ink. And think about it, she's Ink, so your first guess of what her weakness is is probably right. Terry collects some intel, and he catches up with Ink at the docks. Batman proceeds to engage Ink, armed with the knowledge that she is weak to fire and water. water. Fire. This doesn't seem to make much of a difference, as once again, Batman gets his ass absolutely handed to him and he barely escapes with his life as Ink escapes at her own leisure. Batman heads to a Fox Tech warehouse that's on fire and he finds traces of Ink. Unbeknownst to him, Ink lured him there and she latches herself onto the Batjet. Ink confronts Batman and Bruce Wayne in the Batcave on their home turf and she proceeds to beat the piss out of Batman, even almost killing him at one point. And I must say, right, if she actually did kill Terry right here and, and, and that was just the end of the season, I would have had to give the season an A+. You, you, could, you couldn't argue with those results because Ink is absolutely a badass. Bruce and Terry fight on valiantly, but Ink is just too much for them. As the Batcave is being destroyed, and Ex Machina just happened to fall right on Bruce's lap, which is Mr. Freeze's freeze ray. Bruce freezes Ink, and he delivers Ink's remains to Barbara, and everybody breathes a sigh of relief. For now. Episode four, Gollum. In the next episode, you see Blade walking through school. Blade is another popular girl from Terry's school. We're also introduced to Willie. Willie is our local nerd of the school. And after Willie attempts to talk to Blade, Nelson pulls up and promptly rains on his parade, but Blade doesn't seem to be interested in either of them. Willie is kind of an outcast in life and it's kind of hard not to feel bad for the guy. Willie's dad is a hard ass and he patronizes Willie for being a punk. And he tells Willie to retaliate for this. In the next scene, you see Terry making use of Batman's act of camo in order to watch a basketball game before he has to go check in on a mechanical golem that was just stolen. Now this golem that was stolen just happens to belong to Willie's dad. In the next scene, 
you see Nelson attempting to talk to Blade again, but Willie catches up to him with that golem and he proceeds to try and flatten him. Unfortunately for Willie, Batman shows up and throws a wrench in Willie's plans. Batman proceeds to make short work of the golem by forcing the golem to electrocute itself. This results in Willie getting electrocuted too, as Willie is wearing the VR headset that is controlling the golem. At the very least, Willie managed to show Blade what a dick Nelson is as Nelson just left Blade there and ran away for his own life. The next day at school, Nelson is still trying to talk to Blade, but since Nelson bailed on her, Blade decides to ask Willie to the dance. As you can imagine, Willie is absolutely ecstatic about this. But the thing is, Nelson is not going to let that fly. After school, Willie finds himself in the sewer communicating with the golem telepathically. It turns out after getting electrocuted, a side effect was that was the imprinting of the golem onto Willie. Willie gets confronted by some jokers while he's in the sewer, but the golem shows up forcing the jokers to retreat in a panic. After the dance, you get a shot of Terry and Dana having a good time, and you also see Willie at the dance with Blade. Unfortunately, Willie just really doesn't fit in as Willie is really awkward, and as he goes and gets Blade a drink, Nelson shows up yet again to rain on Willie's parade. Nelson and his crew pull Willie outside, and they proceed to throw him into the river. And one thing you'll notice about Batman Beyond is it doesn't shy away from a lot of real world issues like drug use, corporate greed, chemical warfare, murdering, bullying. In the next shot, you see the golem walking through town making its way to Willie's location. As Nelson is on the dance floor with Blade, Dana is on the dance floor with Terry, and Willie shows up soaked in water. Unfortunately, the golem is not far behind Willie, and Willie proceeds to absolutely lay waste to the area in order to get Nelson. After Willie absolutely obliterates the fairgrounds where all this has taken place, Batman finally manages to destroy the golem once and for all. In the last shot of Willie, you see Willie at a detention center having been sentenced to only three years. But Willie quickly discovers that he still retains some of his telekinetic ability independent from the golem. Episode 6, Heroes. In the next episode, you see these three guys who just stole a data chip from this warehouse. Batman is in hot pursuit, but unfortunately these guys get the drop on Batman. Three superhero-like beings show up and quickly make short work of these goons. Batman is wondering who are these guys, and apparently from the intel he was able to gather, he figures out that three, these three guys were formerly scientists who were exposed to some kind of freak accident that gave them superpowers. These guys go around solving crimes, kind of beating Batman to the punch in a way, but unfortunately these guys have their own agenda. These guys just want to go back to being human, but their friend who didn't get exposed to this freak accident is actually selling them out to be used as military grade weapons. As our three anti-heroes figure out their friend is selling them out and what his plan is, they proceed to steal the data they need to reverse the effects of this horrific accident. Batman confronts Magma, but to no avail. After figuring out there is no cure, the military breaks in to try to secure their assets. During the ensuing carnage, the three manage to escape and this whole time, Batman's just been kind of getting his ass whooped. But finally, Batman figures out what's going on. He manages to get a hold of the whole situation. In the next scene, our three anti-heroes confront their friend who is selling them out to the military. And they proceed to try and kill the guy. But Batman shows up and Batman manages to use everybody's abilities against them and dispatch the whole group. As Batman takes down the last of the group, he looks down at his, their friend who sold them out and he asks them, 
are you satisfied? And the guy responds, no, I was their friend. The whole episode is kind of bittersweet. Episode seven, Shriek. In our next episode, it starts off with Mr. Powers getting some psychiatric therapy from a therapist known as Shreve. Shreve shows off his sound suit to Mr. Powers, but Mr. Powers is not impressed. Shreve is kind of disappointed, but Mr. Powers says Shreve should use its sound suit for its more destructive capabilities. In the next scene, you see Wayne rallying the board to keep old Gotham. All the while, Powers is plotting against him. Bruce Wayne is walking through Old Gotham with Terry, explaining why he doesn't want Old Gotham to be torn down. As Bruce is roaming through the theater where his parents died, he's attacked by Shreve, as Shreve has been hired to assassinate Mr. Wayne by Mr. Powers. Thankfully, Batman shows up just in time to engage Shreve, but the damage is already done and Mr. Wayne ends up in the hospital. As Mr. Wayne is in the hospital, he's experiencing these crazy voices in his head telling him to kill himself. And eventually it gets so bad to where the orderlies, they have to come in and they have to sedate Mr. Wayne. Meanwhile, Terry does some undercover work pretending to be a pizza delivery guy and he manages to infiltrate Shreve's workshop and he gets a look at all of Shreve's tech including Shreve's sound masking device. Unfortunately, Terry blows his cover by asking too many questions and Shreve attempts to kill Terry. Luckily, Terry manages to escape. As Terry catches back up with Mr. Wayne, he finds that Mr. Wayne has been committed to the psych ward. Batman proceeds to break Mr. Wayne out of the psych ward and he finds the two-way radio Shreve planted on Mr. Wayne's person. After Terry figures out that that two-way radio is the source of the voices Bruce has been hearing, he proceeds to go after Shreve. Batman and Shreve engage in a pretty epic fight where Shreve kind of has the advantage as he's like a motherfucking sound ninja from Naruto. Terry tries to throw him off by making a bunch of noise with all the machinery around the area but it doesn't seem to work as Shreve is able to mute the world with his sound masking device. Batman manages to destroy the sound masking vice on Shreve's arms and all that sound hits Shreve all at once, taking Shreve out of the game. In the ending sequence, you see Bruce and Terry at the board meeting having saved old Gotham with Mr. Powers looking at them with disdain and disgust. Next episode, you get a shot of these rich fuckers on a yacht having a grand old time. As these fuckers are partying it up, they get robbed by another group of my favorite antagonists, the Royal Flush Gang. The Royal Flush Gang make their appearance and proceed to rob all these rich guys on the yacht, which I'm not necessarily opposed to. The next scene, you see Terry at a nightclub attempting to find Dana. As he finds Dana, the two get into an argument. Seeing as Terry is Batman, he doesn't really have enough time to dedicate to her. Terry storms out angry at Dana, but he happens to catch the eye of Melanie, who is actually Tin from the Royal Flush Gang. Anyway, Terry and Melanie end up hitting it off and they agree to see each other again. Meanwhile, Batman and Bruce investigate the Royal Flush Gang and they're attempting to figure out where they're planning to strike next. While Bruce and Terry investigate, the Royal Flush Gang plan their next heist, including Tin. Unfortunately, the heist goes awry as Batman shows up as they're in the middle of the heist. Tin is concerned about being late for her date with Terry, but seeing as Terry is Batman, He's actually concerned about the same exact thing, so it works out for everybody. Unfortunately for the Royal Flush Gang, they get popped and Batman proceeds to engage them and gain the upper hand. The Royal Flush Gang managed to take a hostage and escape. Around 1am, 
Harry finally manages to get to the bridge where he agreed to meet Melanie, only to be met by silence in the night air seeing as Terry is late. But just as Terry is walking away, Melanie does show up and the two share a warm embrace. Terry and Melanie spend all night hanging out up until the morning and they agree to see each other again tonight. Terry shows up late to meet Bruce Wayne and the two get into an uh, argument over the lack of Terry's resolve. This results in Terry storming out. Ironically, Melanie gets into the same argument with her family and as Melanie is ready to leave the Royal Flush Gang for good, her mom convinces her to stay. As Terry is waiting for Melanie, Melanie calls letting Terry know that she can't see him anymore. Terry is really bummed out about this and he cross-references Melanie's address and figures out where Melanie lives. Upon infiltrating Melanie's house, Terry figures out that Melanie is a member of the Royal Flush Gang. As Terry comes to the realization that Melanie is with the Royal Flush Gang, Terry suits up as Batman and he proceeds to take out each member of the Royal Flush Gang one by one until eventually he comes face to face with Tin. Tin looks Batman in the face stating, I don't suppose I can convince you to let me go, but unfortunately, seeing as Terry is Batman now, Terry turns her in. The last shot we get is of Terry seeing Melanie being taken away in handcuffs. Heartbroken, he returns to Mr. Wayne as Bruce Wayne is waiting nearby and he asks Mr. Wayne, have you ever had anything like this happen to you? The show ends with Bruce Wayne stating, let me tell you a story about a woman named Selena Kyle. Now, for those of you that don't know, Selena Kyle is the original Catwoman, so you can definitely see the parallels in this story. Episode 9, The Winning Edge The next episode starts off with the Jokers, as the Jokers are purchasing some major firepower. Naturally, Batman shows up and pretty quickly dispatches the Jokers. But one unfortunate side effect from being out all night is tough early mornings as Terry is still a student and we see him getting disciplined for falling asleep in class. Dana tells Terry to cheer up as the big game is tonight and you see them hanging out at the big game but unfortunately even at the big game Terry is falling asleep as he's so tired. But at one point as the home team is getting their ass whooped, coach tells the team to get their shit together and the kids seem to pull out some kind of slap tag and proceeds to put it on their arm. And whatever this is, it amplifies their power immensely and it sees one of the players on the home team knocking the other player clear out the ring. Terry takes note of this as it seems extremely suspicious. As Batman is patrolling later that night, he comes across four goons robbing a store. Batman recognizes the names as one of the goons as one of the students he goes to school with. Batman proceeds to engage with them, but one of the guys puts on a slapper and proceeds to kick the hell out of Batman. The next day at school, Terry does some undercover work and he finds slappers in Mason's locker. He takes the slappers as evidence so Batman can examine them, but unfortunately, as he's at home, the slappers fall out of his backpack in front of his mother and she's pissed off. She grounds Terry, but she still allows Terry to go work for Mr. Wayne. Terry manages to keep one of the slappers and Mr. Wayne analyzes a sample from that slapper and he determines that it's Venom, the same shit that B Bane was juicing with. So Batman pays uh, old Bane a visit but when Batman gets to Bane, he realizes due to prolonged use of the venom, Bane now needs a caretaker as Bane is a shriveled up old man. The next day at air hockey practice, Mason can barely play because of prolonged use of the slappers and the fact that Terry took his supply, he is going through extreme withdrawals. So Mason and the gang go out to acquire more slappers 
but unfortunately they're apprehended by Batman before they can do so. Batman tracks down the supplier of the slappers to the Gotham Herald warehouse and Batman decides to drop in for a grand old time and he finds Bane's caretaker is the one that's manufacturing the slappers. Batman proceeds to engage the guy, but the dude throws on a fuck ton of slappers, essentially turning himself into Bane and really giving Batman a run for his money. But Batman manages to slam the guy into a bin full of slappers, essentially forcing the guy to OD and blow himself up in a fit of roid rage. In the last shot of the episode, you see Bruce Wayne escorting Terry home with Terry's lab results to show Terry's mom that Terry hasn't been using after all. Episode 10, Spellbound. In the next episode, we get a shot of Chelsea as she's leaving one of her guy friend's houses. As she's leaving, she runs into our main antagonist of the episode, Spellbinder. Spellbinder basically puts people in genjutsu, forcing them to hallucinate so they can either steal valuables for him or kill themselves altogether. As the police investigate Chelsea's strange behavior, Terry tells Bruce that he doesn't buy it. There's something strange going on here, but Bruce tells Terry to leave it alone for now. Spellbinder basically goes onto a rampage, forcing people to hallucinate for ill-gotten gains but eventually he is confronted by Batman, but unfortunately he gives Batman the slip for now. Terry gets dressed up as he's planning to go to his buddy's wedding, and as Terry is at the wedding chilling with the boys having a grand old time, the bride suddenly starts hallucinating. Terry spots Spellbinder and he suits up and he goes in hot pursuit just in time to save the bride. Spellbinder swoops in to steal the bride's jewelry and Batman starts engaging with Spellbinder, but as he's engaging with Spellbinder, he gets hit with one of Spellbinder's hallucinations, and he proceeds to jump off of the bike hundreds of feet in the air to his death as he is hallucinating. The next day, Terry is at school and the counselor requests to see him, as Terry is a troubled kid. Reluctantly, Terry agrees to see the counselor, and as he goes into the counselor's office, the counselor inquires about how Terry is now working for a, a billionaire and how cool that is. Then the next thing you know, Terry is in Bruce Wayne's mansion robbing the place. When Terry finally snaps out of it, everything's finally starting to fall into place as now he knows the counselor who had access to all the kids in their personal information is Spellbinder. Batman proceeds to engage Spellbinder as Spellbinder is waiting for Terry right outside of Bruce Wayne's mansion, and as Batman engages him, he gets hit with another one of Spellbinder's tricks, and the next thing you know, Batman is getting his ass handed to him by the zombie apocalypse. Terry eventually snaps out of the visions, and he finally goes after Spellbinder, almost getting his ass whooped again before finally defeating Spellbinder because Spellbinder stepped on a stick and Batman just happened to hear it. The last shot you see Terry and Mr. Wayne turning in Spellbinder to Barbara and Barbara just looking at Terry telling him, stay out of trouble kid. Episode 11, Disappearing Ink. In the next episode, we get a shot of Ink in Gotham City holding as she's stuck in cryostasis. Warehouse worker Aaron is the guy charged with looking after her, and every night he kind of obsesses over her frozen body for hours on end. Well, his boss gets a hold of this information and proceeds to fire him for being a freak. Aaron is disgruntled about this whole matter, and he takes this opportunity to cut the power to Ink's holding cell, thereby releasing Ink. In the next shot, we see Bruce showing Terry what is the simple, essentially the Superman buster. Terry asks Bruce how come he doesn't use it that often, and Bruce informs Terry that his heart just couldn't handle the buster. As Terry and Bruce are having a grand old time, they get a call from Gotham City Holding stating Ink has escaped. Batman makes his way over to Gotham City Holding, 
and he makes sure to bring the freeze ray as that's what saved his ass last time. Unfortunately, upon arriving the Gotham City holding, Ink gets the drop on him and ends up destroying the freeze ray in the process. Ink escapes and makes her way to Aaron's house as she knows Aaron is obsessed with her and she can hide out there. Upon arriving back to the back cave, Harry starts sealing up the cracks to the back cave as he thinks Ink is going to come back, but Bruce doesn't think it's going to do much good, and he proceeds to analyze a sample of Ink that was left on Terry's suit. Ink tells Aaron that she needs his help because, unbeknownst to Aaron, Ink's genetic makeup was damaged by the freeze ray. Aaron agrees to help Ink as long as Ink agrees to make Aaron just like her. Aaron helps Ink break into his old place of work and proceeds to manufacture an antigen to help Ink repair her damaged cells. She also cooks up a cocktail to make Aaron just like her, but it's not what you would expect. Batman shows up and gets his ass absolutely whooped by Ink once again, which seems to be a common theme when he's going up against Ink, but Batman comes super close to taking Ink down. But unfortunately, with the help of Aaron, Batman gets Drax once more, and Terry ends up being taken hostage. And keep in mind, Ink whooped Batman's ass, and she wasn't even at full power. She wasn't even nearly at full power, as she's still suffering from cell deterioration. As Batman is tied up, he's attempting to communicate with Mr. Wayne, but Ink is wise to what's going on, and she grabs Terry, and she tells Bruce come to Gotham Hills Arena or she's going to kill Terry and this all ends with a kiss from Ink. As Bruce Wayne shows up, Ink gets the drop on him because Ink can literally blend in with the shadows so she gets the drop on everybody but Ink pulls up disguised as Batman and she gets the drop on Bruce and Bruce proceeds to get his ass whooped but luckily for Bruce, Bruce is wearing the Superman buster and he knocks Ink clear across the room. The Superman Buster helps old ass Bruce Wayne scale just a little bit, but unfortunately, even with the Superman Buster, it isn't anywhere near enough to match Ink, as Ink is about to kill Bruce. Aaron shows up as he's been turned to a blob by the antigen that Ink gave him, and it gives Batman just enough time to escape his chains shatter the window so the rain can dissolve ink. Every time they fight ink, they end up getting super lucky at the end of the fight, and this time is no exception as ink was about to kill both of them once again. So ink gets hit by a ton of rain and she ends up dissipating down the drain. In the last scene, you see Aaron as he's in a glass holding cell, very reminiscent to the same way Ink was immobilized. And his caretaker feeds him a bunch of mashed up food through a tube and proceeds to tell Aaron everything that happened to her today, just like Aaron used to do to Ink. Episode 12, A Touch of Curare. In episode 12, we see Barbara and the DA out having a romantic outing in the park. Barbara and the DA have been dating, apparently. And for those who don't know, Barbara is actually Barbara Gordon, a.k.a. Batgirl, a.k.a. Commissioner Gordon's daughter. Unfortunately, as Commissioner Gordon and the DA are out on their romantic outing, they get attacked by Kirare. Little is known about Kirare, but what is known about her is she is a member of a lethal assassination group who have a 100% kill ratio as if you fail the kill, you become the target. She attempts to kill Barbara in the DA, but Batman shows up and starts engaging with Kirare. Batman and Kirare stalemate each other into the Gotham City Police Department shows up and starts shooting at both of them, forcing Batman and Kirare to flee. 
As Terry and Bruce are collecting intel on Kirare, Barbara Gordon shows up and Terry is absolutely stunned until he figures out that she is Batgirl. Anyway, Barbara tells Terry to stay out of it and the next scene you see Kirare talking to her leaders at the center of this whole mission. They let Kirare know that failure is not an option as it will result in her becoming the primary target. The DA, whose name happens to be Sam, has been placed in a secure location by Barbara with a perimeter full of Gotham City police officers. But this is to no avail as Kirare shows up in Ninja Assassins, the Gotham City police officer securing the perimeter, and she infiltrates the place. As she infiltrates the place, Batman actually manages to get the drop on her using his active camo, but he still ends up getting dropped by Kirare as she closes in on her assassination target. Unfortunately, this was all a trap and Batman is the one that ends up getting caught in the trap. Barbara shows up, but Kirare manages to beat through them and escape while Batman also manages to pull his little disappearing act. Barbara is absolutely pissed by the time she catches up with Terry and she threatens Bruce's and Terry's well-being upon seeing them. Terry wants to know why Barbara hates Bruce so much, but Barbara says it's ancient history. Luckily, history is Terry's favorite subject. As Barbara and Terry are talking, she explains that she doesn't hate Bruce. In the end, Bruce just couldn't hang up the cape. As she's leaving, she once again states that she doesn't hate Bruce. She hates what Bruce has become, which is a great man. In the next scene, Barbara and Sam are hatching a plan to take down Kirare while Bruce and Terry are hatching a plan of their own. As Sam and Barbara are on the metro, Kirare shows up and quickly dispatches the Gotham City police officers and disables the train knocking the entire cart clear off the tracks into a building. Somehow Barbara and Sam survive this. As they are running away from Kirare, she is in hot pursuit. While Barbara and Sam end up in a meat packing facility, Unfortunately for them, they are no match for Kirare, and they're about to become the meat on the hook. Luckily, Batman shows up to ex machina of this situation, and as Batman is fighting Kirare, he's kind of getting his ass whooped, and he throws a batarang, he throws a couple of batarangs actually, and totally misses, but as he's about to get knocked into the meat grinder, Barbara manages to grab one of the stray batarangs and knock Kirare's sword clear out of her hands from like a hundred feet away. I guess the old girl still got it. In the last scene, Terry is at his house watching the news and they're talking about how Kirare has escaped Gotham City police custody. Bruce is on the phone with Terry and he tells Terry, don't worry about it as she has a lot bigger things to worry about now seeing as since she failed, she is now the primary target. Episode 13, Ascension. In the season finale of Batman Beyond, you see Blight, AKA Derek Powers, and a bunch of his goons at a warehouse jacking a bunch of barrels full of polymorph. Batman shows up and proceeds to engage with Blight and his goons, but after failing to take down Batman, the warehouse goes up in a chemical fire and Blight is forced to retreat. Batman is forced to stay behind as there are a bunch of innocent civilians that are caught in a blaze and Batman is still unaware that Mr. Powers is Blight. Mr. Powers is burning through his skin way too rapidly and he's searching for a permanent solution as he knows he can't keep the charade much longer. At the same time all this is going on, Mr. Powers confides in his son about the whole situation while there's protesters outside of his house. As Mr. Powers is handing over power to his son due to his deteriorating health, protesters storm into the meeting and throw rotten fish at Mr. Powers due to the polluted rivers that are a direct result of Mr. Powers. Unfortunately, Mr. Powers gets pissed off and he blows his cover by revealing to everybody he's blight. Since his cover is blown, he takes this opportunity to go directly after Mr. Wayne, 
but luckily Batman shows up to ex machina the situation. As Batman is engaging with Blight, Blight erupts into a poisonous rage and ends up escaping. Terry comes to the realization that he's the one who created Blight, but he comes to the conclusion that he really doesn't care seeing as Blight is the one who killed his father. And the next scene, you see Blight having a conversation with his son, but unfortunately the conversation doesn't go the way he wants it to, and Blight comes to the conclusion that he's all on his own. While Batman's out patrolling flying high looking for Blight, he sees something he didn't expect, and that's the old school bat signal. Upon arriving to the location of the bat signal, he realizes it's just Paxton Powers urging him to help him find Blight. Batman agrees to help Paxton find Blight, but naturally nothing's as it seems because ba Paxton is planning to betray Batman. Batman finds the location of Blight and he drops Paxton a data disc and Paxton does something extremely stupid. He just throws away the battering that Batman left. I don't know why you would throw that thing away. That thing is sick. But Batman returns back to Blight's location as Blight is at a nuclear submarine and instead of engaging him directly, he uses the old carrot and stick approach to lure Blight into Paxton's custody. As Paxton is torturing Blight with the anti-radiation device he made, Batman tells him to stop. He's about to kill Blight, but the fishermen from earlier come out and start shooting at Batman as the fishermen have made a deal with Paxton Powers. As the fishermen are shooting at Batman, they accidentally shoot the device that Paxton was using to suppress Blight with. Blight basically goes nuclear and sinks the entire submarine in some more shit. And I'm sure this is going to do unspeakable damage to the ecosystem, but you never hear about that part of it, you know? So as the submarine goes down, Paxton escapes and Blight goes down with the sub. And in the last scene, you see Paxton watching the news talking about how in light of the submarine being sunk, there is still no news on the location of Blight, AKA Derek Powers. Then out of the shadows comes Batman and Batman lets Paxton know you know you made a bad enemy tonight. Paxton thinks at first Batman is referring to himself, then he comes to the stark realization that he's talking about Blight, and the news states that Blight's body was not recovered. Paxton tells Batman, well, I guess he melted with the sub, and the episode ends with Batman looking at Paxton saying, yeah, yeah, right. In conclusion guys, that is the end of season 1 of Batman Beyond. If you haven't seen Batman Beyond, I would highly recommend it, especially if you're looking for a show that came out back in the day, but is still so good and so ahead of its time that it's still pretty modern today. I would highly recommend you go check out Batman Beyond. Anyway guys, I appreciate you watching, thank you if you made it this far in the video. Have a beautiful day, and if you like the content, maybe like the video, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Peace.